Wonderful viewers of Rema TV, good morning once again. My name is Pastor Charles, and this is an Easter edition of your favorite program with Bishop Brookman Redemption Hour. Redemption Hour with Bishop Brookman. But uh, of course, I'm not Bishop Brookman. I am sitting to, to, as it were, moderate today's program. It's an Easter session program, so it's out of the ordinary today. But like I said, it's Redemption Hour with Bishop Brookman. And so he, our father, is in the studios this morning. And so I have the very singular honor this morning of playing the host to our father this morning. Let's welcome our father. Daddy, good morning. Thanks for the privilege to be here with you. Good morning, and God bless you, Pastor Charles. It's indeed a wonderful opportunity done me to be hosted today and uh, I believe we're going to have a fantastic time on uh, Redemption Hour, uh, especially when it is an Easter program, uh, tailor made particularly for our wonderful viewers. But you can, you're looking good in your jacket. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> you're welcome. God bless. All right, so viewers, let's take a second of break. We'll come back and then we'll have a wonderful discussion with our father, Bishop Brookman, in the studios. We'll be right back. Lovely viewers, you all come back from the break. Like I said earlier, I'll be playing host to our father this morning. Um, I have a few questions. Personally, I want to receive answers to, and I know some of you at home 
will also want some answers. And so, Daddy, you will be blessing us with these answers. Straight ahead, let's go to the first question. Daddy, uh, seemingly these times we are in, um, looks like it's the season of rapture. Um, and people are having this speculation that this lockdown, one week, two weeks, three weeks, and if we are not careful, will extend forever. Uh, as a senior prophet as you are, and your knowledge of scriptures and all of that, can you please help us to understand the times and seasons we are pertaining to this COVID-19 and lockdown and rapture and all of that? Well, we thank God. Um, Honestly, I've had a couple of um, um, phone calls from sons and daughters and pastors that uh, apostolically God has been giving me grace to be pastoring. And um, all of them are having the same questions. I recall <laughs> one young pastor called and said, Daddy, are we indeed in the rapture? And, and I said, no, we are, we are not in the rapture. One daughter called me last three days and she was also saying that uh, that is, is this um, lockdown going to continue forever? Are we going to be socially distancing ourselves <laughs> forever? Is it a new thing that the, the world would have to learn to embrace because this is the norm that is going to be like? And um, I said through scriptures, like you're saying, um, the scripture in um, 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 the book of Mar um, Matthew, the chapter number um, 24, the verse 36 through 44 came to mind when Jesus on his early ministry was um, posed with the same question. Uh, his disciples asked him the question that how would the sign of the coming of the Son of Man be? And then he was very emphatic about it. He spoke to them that as it was in the days of Noah, okay, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Then he went further to say that as it was in the days of Noah, when they were marrying, they were giving in marriages, that, that is to do with um, divorce, and um, they, they were having social lives going on and everything. Then the flood came. That is how the coming of the Son of Man will be. So he was trying to say that the rapture will more or less be like how it was um, in the days of Noah okay now taking time to study that scripture you can see that so then per what Jesus said what will really preempt is coming um, will be more or less like as it was in the days of Noah he built an ark kept preaching and people didn't hear what he was saying um, people were marrying people were giving in marriages life was going on social gatherings were on because you cannot marry without having uncles brothers cousins nephews and nieces coming around you cannot divorce your wife without fighting and misunderstanding you know so um, this tells us that this social distancing will end before the coming of jesus because if it doesn't end how can people socially gather for people to marry Th this tells us that all these lockdowns and this various stuff will end before the coming of jesus all right before uh, the coming of jesus as he said it was going to be just like it was in the days of noah okay but uh, i still want to emphatically say this that we are in trying moments the bible calls it um the beginning of sorrows because um after 3,500 years, when the first Passover was instituted in Genesis, the chapter number 12, when Israel was about to encounter the Exodus from Egypt to Canaan, when God um, locked the whole of Israel down in um, 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 Goshen and told them to stay indoors, nobody goes out. They should smear their doorposts with the blood of the animals they were going to kill. And the angel of death was going to pass. So Israel was locked in or they had a total lockdown. Now, from that time afterwards, all the Passover that came, Israel did it publicly in their synagogues and everything. But this is the only year, 
2020 that because of COVID-19, Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, had to announce a total lockdown that this week is Israel's Passover and they are doing their Passover after 3,500 years. This is the first time Israel is doing their Passover locked in or locked down. Just like it happened in the days of Moses when the first Passover was instituted. And so this is really telling the church something that we are very close. But then rapture has not happened yet. This lockdown will end. We'll all come back. Um, social gatherings will go on. People will be so, life will be so normal. People will even forget that COVID-19 has ever, like the Spanish flu uh, that, that came. So to answer the question, that's exactly what I have to say. Wow. Thank you very much for that. And so if you have your wedding, your funeral coming up, don't panic. Like Daddy said, we'll get back to a time of social gathering. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Somebody asked me a question and says, Daddy, so wouldn't God be unfair that he has not allowed us to enjoy marriage and uh, good life and then all of a sudden it's coming like that? And I said, no. <laughs> but the good news is that, hey, if rapture even comes today and we are born again, we are going and life there is going to be better than um, life here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank yeah. you very much, Daddy, for this expose. And Passover brings us into another season of our times where we are in. Today happens to be Easter Saturday. Yes. And tomorrow is Easter Sunday. We are commemorating or um, um, uh, remembering the death and the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. That That's is, right. Uh, comp uh, with the Passover and with Easter, can you tell us exactly why jesus came down on earth and what he came to do for us don't ask a preacher a question like that you're <laughs> expecting me to preach <laughs> yeah um uh, you know uh, 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 let, let me just give you a background and then we can really um, answer this god created the heavens and the earth okay he created angels to assist him with the creation and the angels had departments. Um, one of the departments was prison worship, being headed by Lucifer. Uh, then the uh, angel that was really in charge of prison worship. And then another department in charge of delivering of messages, headed by Gabriel. And then another department headed by uh, Michael, that is defense. Now all these three archangels had their roles were playing in heaven. Because God inhabited the praise of his people, Lucifer was really, uh, because Lucifer was in charge of music, he was close to God um, in that department. And leading all the angels, they prostrated before God 24-7, singing holy, 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 holy. And so one day, and the cabinet had a meeting, the Father, Son, and the Spirit in heaven. Um, and then according to Genesis, the chapter number 1, verse 26 to 20, 27, um, God said, let us create man in our own image and after our likeness um, to be custodians of the earth. And it's believed historically that Lucifer, because he was close to God, worship and praises, was eavesdropping and probably overheard God saying that. He went to all the angels in heaven and then spoke to them about the fact that we have been here with God assisting him with the creation. And he's considering creating some beings to be custodians of the earth. And so let's revolt against God's decision. And that was the time in Isaiah, the Bible said, Lucifer said that I would be like the most high God. He wanted to be because he heard that God wanted to create some people to be like God. Unfortunately, he was not supposed to um, have that desire because he had been created with uniqueness and he was in a class all by himself. The Bible says that the timbrance of his creation was made in him. And he was walking in expensive stones in the gold, silver, topaz, carbon coast. I mean, Lucifer, the Bible says he was an anointed cherub. He was supposed to have appreciated his uniqueness. Unfortunately, let me digress and say this, that many people, because they don't appreciate who they really are, sometimes envy other people and want to be like other people. You know, so 
uh, the Bible said that he managed to draw three quarters of the whole host of angels in heaven and then there was a fight because you cannot create coup d'etat in heaven and survive there so God being too big for that nonsense mandated the angel in charge of defense Michael to fight Lucifer and so you see that in Revelation I think the chapter number 12 from the verse 7 downwards there was war in heaven and Lucifer um, and his courts fought against Michael but they couldn't prevail so Michael hewn him down and when he was coming to the earth the Bible said God said woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and the Bible said that because the devil knew he had a borrowed time he came down here with fury and anger you know to come fight the people on the earth um, the Bible says that that did not stop God from creating those men that he had decided to create to come and hit the head. And that was when he went on with the creation of Adam and Eve in Genesis the chapter numbers 2 and then 3. But because Adam was created, had never gone to school before, didn't have any classmate, God intermittently would come to the garden in the cool of the day and come and school Adam about what transpired. Okay, because after Adam, the devil had messed up, the earth was without form and void. Because when God cast him down, um, through Michael and he was coming down because um, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 7 angel I'm sorry because angels are spirits um, when they were coming some stayed in the heaven Will be right back. I was saying sorry for the break down in transmission um, you know so when the devil and his courts were thrown down the earth the earth now was without form and void and darkness has covered um, the earth but God still went ahead with his creation Adam and Eve was created and then God intermittently will come into the garden in the cool of the day and then he will come and educate them that there is a being called Lucifer the very day he heard about your creation he revolted so he is your enemy he'll be coming in once a while to come and try to thwart my plan and my counsel so you got to be careful so that you don't allow him to intrude your privacy i've given you everything at your beck and call here in this garden set for this tree okay the tree of knowledge of good and evil so many theological exposés to read but the main thing that will be good for the understanding of our viewers it's like you come to RCC, there's a chair for Bishop Brookman. You don't sit on. There's nothing like any occultic in it, but at least to show everybody that there's a seat of authority in the house. So that tree in the garden was to tell the, um, um, uh, to tell the family, Adam and Eve, that I've given you authority as the custodians of the earth, but I'm still the boss in here. Unfortunately, Adam was busily minding his own business, doing his ministry, naming the animals, as God had told him. And his wife was standing by a tree and Lucifer entered into the serpent and spoke to the serpent to ask if uh, there's a revelation there every man must marry a woman who believes in his assignment so the wife is on, on job the wife would have to stand with him unfortunately pastors marry women who love politics <laughs> and whilst they are busy doing ministry their wives are 
also um, NDC and MPP. You know, I'm not saying it's not it's not good to be patriotic, but you know, uh, for instance, a case that happened once. A man of God was divorcing his wife, and they brought the case to me because um, he loves ministry, really caught for it, and the wife also loves sports. And whilst he's in his bedroom doing his quiet time, the wife will be shot in the living room. Chelsea, man, you, you know. <laughs> and there was a friction in the house, so they brought the case to me. I had to sit him down and talk some sense into the head of the wife. Now, what I'm saying is that Adam was busily naming the animals into his ministry, but unfortunately, his wife was having a different. <laughs> Um, vision altogether and as she stood under the tree and spoke to the serpent I had a problem with Eve because this is the first time you had an animal speaking you should have, you should have fled and go talk to your husband about it she stood there listened to all that the, 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 the devil was speaking through um, and the serpent that has God told you never to eat from any of the trees of the garden this tells us that the devil doesn't know it all because he didn't come to say that as God told you never to eat from this tree he said from any of the trees of the garden then Eve said, he has not. But then he has told us this very tree. So it was Eve who gave the devil the clue. That tells us that the devil is no omniscient. He listens to what we say and then he is against us. Unfortunately, he lied to Eve and said, God knows that the very day that you eat from this very tree of knowledge of good and evil, you'll be like God. Unfortunately, the devil is unexpected mixing the lies with the truth. Adam and Eve were not supposed to eat the tree to be the fruit to be like God. They were already created in the image of God. Let me say to people listening to me, you don't need a fetish priest to help you become who you really are. You are complete in Christ. Unfortunately, they succumbed to the antics of the devil. And what happened was that they disobeyed God. So God came to the garden and as it were, waiting for Adam to be in the very geographical location that put him. He went there and did not see Adam and Eve there. They had fled and they were on a hiding, had hid themselves and had walk, um, had covered themselves with um, um, the leaves that they, they wove from um, the tree. And God said, Adam, where are you? Adam said that uh, the, the woman you gave to me, you know, has lured me to eat from the tree. We're not supposed to eat from. God went to Eve. Eve said it was the devil. One man sent the shit blames. And so God passed on a judgment and said, Adam, from today, you're going to struggle from the curse of the earth you will sweat okay until you'll be able to fend for yourself and your family he cursed the woman and said that and said to the woman that you are also going to endure the consequences of your actions by suffering on your time of delivery um, you're going to go through pangs and pain of delivery but as for the devil god did not even listen to what he had to say the expose is that he was teaching as a principle that you don't have any business talking to Satan. So he did not talk to him. He spoke to Adam and had him out. He spoke to Eve and had her out. But he did not speak to the serpent. Because we are not supposed to talk to demons. And all he did was that he legislated and said, Satan, from today, Genesis 3.15, the, um, um, the, 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 the seed of the woman will bruise your head. That was the first time Jesus announced the salvation plan. That he had for humanity the seed of the woman that woman was mary and the seed that was talking about the virgin bed because normally is the man who carries the seed the spermatosia and he releases it into the woman and the sperm goes for the egg so he should have said the seed of the man but he said the seed of the woman women don't have seeds like we know but he said the seed of the woman which means that this birth that is going to be done for the messiah to be born is going to be done by a woman all right and in galatians 3 16 the bible said that that seed was christ as soon as satan heard that the seed of the woman would bruise his head he went on a strong tangent of an attack on any potential carrier of that seed so as soon as he saw um noah escaping the flood he felt noah was that seed so he attacked noah's family just after the flood noah became alcoholic his sons one of his sons went to see his nakedness noah got up from his uh, booze and got angry fled up and cursed his son confusion in the family i could see the devil throwing pity party getting excited that well let that seed come let me see god established another covenant with abraham and then 
um, in Genesis chapter 12 from 1 to 3, <clears throat> I'll bless you and make you a blessing out of you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. The devil realized that this could be the potential career of the seed. So whoever his wife is going to be, I'm going to lock the womb. And for 20 years, Sarah couldn't have a child. The devil didn't want that seed to be born. Fortunately, by the grace of God and through prophetic declarations, um, Isaac was born. Um, <clears throat> when Isaac was born, Isaac also married Rebecca. Okay? And Rebecca, uh, for 40 years, couldn't also have a child. The enemy attacked her womb to ensure that that seed God had promised in Genesis 3.15 would not be bad but oh glory to god the truth is that whatever god decides to do nobody stops him from doing it supernaturally years after um what is her name um, um rebecca gave birth to twins and i believe it was prophetic and divine he didn't allow her to have one child least the devil would have probably destroyed it thinking that was a seed he gave birth, she gave birth to two children um, um jacob and esau and normally, you know the Jewish custom that the firstborn always becomes um, the ladit, okay, to succeed so the father. So the God made it said that um, um, Isaac's um, um, son, um, Ishmael, the firstborn, I'm sorry, um, Esau, the firstborn, will be a bit true one. Then he will have a kind of lifestyle that would not be too spiritual for the devil to say, well, the firstborn who was supposed to succeed the old man is not up to it at all. And God had in Jacob the seed okay jacob years after also gave birth to 12 um, 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 sons and then the 12 sons he made it such that uh, the firstborn who was Reuben, who apparently was supposed to succeed him also messed up and i could see the devil saying that well no seed and god encrypted the seed in judah and in um um um, um, um joseph and then joseph when the devil realized that he could be a potential career got him out of town his brothers threw him out of town into egypt he went to egypt and hid himself there for many years i can go on and on and on but all these times prophets were prophesying that that seed is going to be born like isaiah prophesied and said in isaiah 7 14 a virgin will give birth to a child this was to encourage israel and to give them consolation that what god has promised has never been forgotten the devil may think he's having his way but god is still working things both to will and to do of his own good pleasure he said a virgin shall give birth to a child his name shall be called emmanuel meaning god with us in the chapter 9 the verse number 6 of isaiah he said his government shall be upon his shoulders his name shall be called wonderful mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace in 53 and the verse number three down was Isaiah. He prophesied and said that he was wounded for transgressions. He was bruised for iniquities. The chastisement for peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we are healed. And all these prophets were just speaking until in Malachi, as the last prophet in the Old Testament books ended, between Malachi and Matthew was what we call the intertestamental period. Total silence. And let me say this anytime god is about doing something unique in the life of a person there is total lockdown total silence the world should watch out something is about to happen in the body of christ after this lockdown i'm going to see mega ministries miracles healing signs wonders people are going to carry real move of god there's going to be a harvest of salvation of souls i'm telling you why because anytime god wants to do something unique in the world there is total silence there was total silence and nobody heard about any prophet prophesying about the messiah for 400 years um, theologians call it the intertestamental period and just after that period my bible tells me that a virgin was betrothed to a man called joseph and jigebra came down and said god wants to have your womb so heaven can use your womb as a doorway for the messiah to be born jesus to cut long story short was born when he was born when herod heard about it from the mouth of the magi the wise men he sent a delegation to go look for that seed to kill that seed still the devil inciting herod to go after that seed but glory to god if you got seed in you the enemy will come strong after it but nevertheless the counsel of god shall stand the seed jesus walked on the face of the earth he healed the sick he cast out devils at 10 38 how god anointed him with the holy ghost and power who went about doing good and healing them that were oppressed by the devil when he finished his assignment because 
1 john 3 8 the bible says for this purpose the son of man was made manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil luke 10 verse number 17 through 18 the bible says that for the son of man came to seek and to save them that were perishing and so when he finished his assignment he hung on the calvary's cross wounded for transgressions bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace laid upon him by his stripes were healed and then in the verse number 30 the book of john 19 jesus shouted and said Kura, in the greek which means it is finished i finished why i came which means that whatever adam and eve gave to the devil now jesus has come in the form of a man so to be a fair play that do not be like god took it from the hands of the devil and the devil said god has been unjust so he came and took everything from the hands of the devil to give it as many who believe in his holy name then they'll have the keys of the kingdom whatever they bind on it now is bound in heaven so that's basically the answer to the why jesus came to the earth <laughs> wow this is a whole message <laughs> it's a whole message and believe you me believe believers this is what we sit under every time we have service and so i know we are not gathering as a church but in your homes anytime you see bishop Rickman coming online get your book get your pen get your pencils your bibles because anytime our daddy sits bishop is always a blessing unto us thank you very much daddy for this um, i Oliver Twist, I always ask for more. So there's another question. I, 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 on the cross, he said something that Jesus hung on the cross and said, it is finished. It means that there is no Easter without the cross. Certainly. I there like is, that. There no is Easter no without Easter cross. without the cross. And so I, I, now we understand Easter. I, I also want you to, as it were, explain in this whole thing, COVID-19 Easter, what is the role of the cross mm. in this celebration and in this world as, as we stand today? Mm. You know, in Deuteronomy 21, verse 22 to 23, the Bible said that if any man had committed any treason, he had to be hanged on the cross, okay, so that he would suffer the consequences of his illicit act. And then that was the custom of the day. You did something illicit contravening the decrees, of God you are punished by being hung on the cross so in Galatians 3 verse 13 and 14 uh, the Bible says that to hang on the cross was like a case you know everybody who saw you hanging on the cross will see that you had committed a treason or something very very illicit Adam and Eve our ancestors committed a treason by disobeying God that was the first son on earth to disobey God he gives you the authority to be the custodian with the earth to take charge over it he comes to find you handed it over to another occupant are you getting it is he so in luke the chapter number four and the verses one downwards i think the verse number five um, um the devil was arrogantly boasting to jesus that you look at the kingdoms of the world and his glory you bow to me i give it to you it's at my beck and call it was handed over to me and i give it to whoever i please I tell people this was, this was the first time the devil ever spoke the truth because it's true adam and eve handed it over to him and so because they committed the, this treason by sinning against god being the first sin and disobeying god told not to eat from the tree of the garden and they did that very tree of knowledge of good and evil they were supposed to be hanged so in the book of um romans the chapter number three and the verse number um, um 23 the bible says for all have sinned through them all of us have sinned when we go to heaven i will look for adam and i'll ask him why did you do that for us to go through all this mess we went through for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and in romans chapter 6 the verse number 23 the bible says that for the wages of that son is death okay and ezekiel says it that the soul that son must die and that dead was to be put on a tree you know so jesus coming to hang on the cross for us was to tell the whole world that what you and i was supposed to have gone through because of the sin of adam now he has hung on the cross on the tree for all of us 
and prior to Jesus' coming, um, there were typologies, right? Foreshadowing what was going to happen on Calvary in the New Covenant, though it was happening in the Old Testament, like in Genesis the chapter number 22, the verse numbers 1 downwards, when God told um, um, Abraham to go sacrifice his son, his only son Isaac. And when they were going, the Bible said that they journeyed three days, okay, to tell us that Christ would die and resurrect on the third day. When they were going, Isaac had the wood at his back to tell us that Jesus would carry the cross at his back. When they were going, they went with two servants, okay, to tell us that on Calvary, there will be two thieves, one at the right of Jesus and the other at his left. Abraham told the servants, Eliezer and the other one, that wait for me here. I and the lad are going to worship yonder and return. Why would Abraham say that? Because God had told him prior to this that go sacrifice your son. You're going to sacrifice your son and you say that I and the son are going to return. And they did return because Christ would die and resurrect on the third day. Now all these were shadows of the things to come to reveal to us that this is what the cross is going to do for us all right okay so um to ask about the cross the cross stood for the pain the punishment um the agony the consequences of all the bad things that we did that was met to us that was supposed to have gone through but christ went through all that for us to let us know that now he's wounded for our transgressions he's bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace laid upon him and by all the stripes in the door spittle at dawn of a drunkard i just want you to imagine i, I see someone saying ew you know and it's part of this on him the disgrace and everything that he went through all because of us on calvary to let us know that now we stand having a new chance of life romans 8 1 there is now therefore no condemnation for us because he's been condemned for us those of us who are in christ jesus those who uh, do not walk after the flesh but after the spirit and so that is the purpose of the cross and let me say this in numbers the chapter number 21 verse 8 downwards israel in the wilderness spoke against the theocracy of god and they became indifferent by the fact that god has raised a leader over them and they instructed and moses and god became angry for they touching the authority of god put over them and what happened was that god's anger lifted his banner of protection over them and the bible said that scorpions and serpents in the wilderness came attacked them and started um, 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 and biting them and, and destroying them the people were smart they went to moses and pleaded and said forgive us talk to god on our behalf and moses went to god and said what do i do and god said well you got to do what you got to do is to um, take a stick and you raise it like a pole and then put a bronze stem. a bronze is a type of judgment put the bronze serpent on it like christ crucified on the cross and let everybody bit him by the serpent and scorpions look at the bronze serpent as they behold it the the stand of the poison and the bite in their system is going to be diluted and the poison is going to be negated they did that and they had their healing and their deliverance that is a typology foreshadowing what will happen on calvary that if you look to jesus the author and the finish of your faith on the cross every virus every serpent every scorpion biting you will lose its grip over your life the cross has done a lot and this is one of them you look at the cross no serpent bites you no scorpion bites you rather receive the exousia to tread on serpents and scorpions and nothing shall by any means hurt you there's another example in the wilderness again when they came to the waters of mara and they saw the waters bitter Moses went to God and said, what do we do? God said, cut a stick. That was a type of the cross. Drop it into the bitter waters. He did that. And the bitter waters was ten sweet. And Israel drank the water to tell us that no matter how bitter life has become, getting connected to the cross, bitterness becomes bitterness and sweet in life. Another example again. Can I share it again? I mean, the prophets in the Old Testament were falling trees to go build themselves a house to house the crowd. And the Bible said that the metal axe head they were using to fall the trees fell into the water. What happened was that they went to Elisha and said that, Behold, alas, the metal axe head was bored. Isn't it amazing that anytime you're doing something phenomenal, the devil comes strong and attacks your metal axe head? Hey, 
if something happens in your quest to do something great for God, don't give up. It means that you are making strides against the kingdom of darkness and the courts of the devil. So keep doing it. All right. My Bible tells me that they went and told the prophet. I was thinking the prophet was going to call for um, divers to dive in there and go bring the metal ha the axe um, uh, metal the metal axe head. They didn't do that. The Bible said the prophet took a stick. What has a stick got to do with the drawing metal? But as he dropped it into the water, the Bible said that the metal started floating. That tells you that if you are experiencing drowning in this life, if you are backsliding, retrogressing, digressing in life and you want progress, hook on to the stick that is the cross and your life will stay afloat. That is the significance of the cross and what the cross has done for us in this season. There's power indeed in the cross mm -hmm. and I'm enjoying my, my studio session with my father, <laughs> the bishop, here because I'm learning so much this morning. Thank the you, power Jesus. of the cross. Again, I'll have another question for daddy. You realize that on the cross, the two uh, uh, thieves that were, were with Jesus had their legs broken by the soldiers. That's and right. It got to Jesus' turn and they realized he was dead. Mm. And he pierced the side with a spear. Mm. The Bible said that blood and water gushed out. It means that on the cross there was the shedding of blood. blood. Daddy, I, w I, want us, I want you to educate us on the role and the significance of the blood in this time and in this season. Mm. I love what you just said. When the sword pierced through his, his side and water and blood came out. Doctors and nurses will tell you for the woman to have the child born, the placenta breaks, water and blood comes out. It's believed that it was on that day the church was born. And you know, he came saying he's the second Adam, right? The last Adam. You know, the first Adam had um, an operation created here by God for Eve to be born, to, for Eve to be created. So if Jesus uh, claims to be the last Adam, that puts him in a class more than Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, Confucius, and all of them, then prove to us that you are really the Messiah. We want to see if you are really the last Adam. And so his uh, placenta had to break for the church, his bride, to be born. So that was where the eve of the new covenant, the church, was born. But talking about the blood, the blood was necessary because you say you are dying for humanity for all the sins um, that they have committed. Um, in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 without a shedding of blood there is no remission of sins and so if our sins are going to be forgiven then blood must be shed reason why the blood had to be shed is in Leviticus 17 11 the Bible said that the life of every animal is in the blood so Jesus' life was in the blood so if his life was going to be for our lives then certainly his blood had to come out to really atone for all our sins and uh, the blood is speaking better thing than that of Abel that if you have an encounter with it it washes you clean and it's amazing it's the only blood that washes people it doesn't leave stains on them but makes them white as snow so the blood oozed out to wash us clean from all our sins that's why the blood it's very significant very important it is only the blood that washes and doesn't leave a stain that's mm. a mystery mm. how can blood wash and the blood will not leave a stain <laughs> and that's the mystery of the blood we'll take a very quick break we'll come back and daddy will have i have a lot of questions for daddy today <laughs> and our, our bishop our father will, will do us the honors of, of of serving us with the answers. So let's take a quick break. We'll come back and then continue with the question and answer segment. We'll be right back.
Wow, lovely viewers of Rema TV, you back. This is a wonderful encounter we are having with our Father 101 to be a blessing to us, Bishop Edwin Ewusi Brookman. Amen. And, and so if, if you, are, you are home, you are watching, you can send a message via WhatsApp numbers, you can leave a comment, you can leave a message on any of our social media handles, and Daddy will do us the honest of reading it for us. The bishop is here. He's blessing us with the word. But there is this thing I want bishop to address for us. And this one is the whole sermon again. Because once you listen to it, you always want to listen to it all over again. And yesterday, that year, I heard you talking about the exchange as a privilege of a Christian. Yeah, the exchange. And I spent time pondering over it. I spent time listening to it. But I want, I want you to, to share with us one more time about our privileges as, as coming to Calvary, as be believing in Jesus and the cross. This wow. one, you have, you have the floor. There's no limit. <laughs> <laughs> we thank God. Honestly, yesterday, when I was teaching myself, I was enjoying myself behind the pulpit, you know, whilst they were watching us online. Um, uh, there are privileges, you know, on Calvary. Uh, I call it the greatest transaction that ever took place or the greatest exchange. Because when Adam and Eve handed over the legitimacy of they being the custodians of the earth into the hand of the devil, what happened was that everything that was meant for us was given to Satan. So upset whenever I think through that. But on Calvary's cross, he hung there to demand the exchange. His life was given for that exchange to really go on or to be transacted. And so eight aspects. You said as you preach, right? So uh, <laughs> eight aspects. Never tell a preacher to preach. <laughs> eight aspects of the exchange yesterday night I shared with but for the benefit of those who couldn't tune in um, in Isaiah 53 the verse 5 the Bible says for Christ was wounded for our transgressions our transgressions and he was bruised for our iniquities so the first exchange that really took place was that Christ was punished for sins he had never committed so that we will be forgiven of all our sins that we have committed through Adam. That's the first transaction that went on. First exchange. He was punished. That's why I must not be punished again. That's why the devil has no right punishing you if you are in Christ Jesus. With sicknesses, with shame, with frustrations, with bombardment, with depression, with trauma, with all kinds of fears. No. Because Christ was punished. And you and I know legally one crime must not be punished twice. That's why we can boldly say affliction must not happen the second time. Number two, Christ had to carry all our sicknesses and our diseases on him so that we will be healed and remain healed the rest of our lives. When I got this revelation, by the grace of God, for the past 30 something years I've been preaching, I've never once um, complained of any headache before why because i discovered that christ was made sick covered all my sickness on him in matthew 8 16 and 17 when evening had come they brought him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the sons with word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Azad the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses he bore our sicknesses and took our infirmities you know infirmities weaknesses malaria headaches all our sickness he bore them so that i would stand acquitted and discharged and i would never carry any sickness anymore the third transaction was that christ was made son that i might become the righteousness of god in christ jesus according to second corinthians 5 21 for he made you who knew no sin to become sin that i might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So now I am the righteousness of God, not by merits, 
not because I fast too much, not because I pray too much, not because I attended a good school, not because I speak good English, not because I'm handsome, not because I wore good clothes, not because I wore a scarf or a magazine. I'm righteous because Christ became unrighteous so that I can become righteous. So he took all my sins and carried all my unrighteousness so that now I can also carry his righteousness. The fourth transaction was because Christ, by the grace of God, tasted death that I might taste life and have life to the full. So Hebrews 2, 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of his death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. He tasted death for everyone so that John 10, 10, I might have life and have it to the full. So now I can boldly declare I shall not die before my time. COVID-19 cannot kill me prematurely. I will live to declare the works of God because Christ died prematurely. Let me, when I was doing my studies on the cross, I realized that when they came to tell Pilate that the legs of all the others are broken and, 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 and they, they were not dying, but Jesus, according to history, had died that early. And it's believed historically that he died two hours before the normal time everybody crucified and had to die. He died prematurely so that I will not die prematurely. I, I never get any reason here. So you stand acquitted and you shut from every legislation of death, okay, method for you. Um, the faith exchange was that Jesus became a curse for us that we might receive his blessings. You see, so um, the book of um, 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 uh, Galatians. Um, talks about the fact that um, Christ hung on the cross okay and became a curse on the cross that I might receive the blessings of the Lord Galatians 3 verse 13 to 14 and then the sick um, the self okay the sit is that he took away my poverty that I might enjoy his prosperity Christ was very rich they were rich yesterday night i said something that he didn't carry money uh, about but he lived on his father's credit card you see so anytime he needed money he log on he will log on to the bank in heaven and get money to feed five thousand people he once asked his disciples that since you followed me has you ever have you ever lacked anything and they said never we've never lacked anything that tells us that i mean no no i mean how many ceos will ask their, their, their subordinate set question for them to have certain answer. He had an accountant, Judas Iscariot. And if you don't have money, what business would you do hiring an accountant? The time he needed a car to sit on, they went and brought to him um, a limousine that nobody has ever sat on before. A limousine in court. I mean, I'm talking about a stallion or a donkey. It was a tear rubber donkey. Okay? Now, how would a poor man live that kind of life? He wore an immaculate robe. To the extent that when he died, the Roman soldiers who had the Roman pride, all right, will cast a lot to determine who takes the clothes of this Jewish man who is our servant to the house. That should tell you how expensive his clothes was. You know, and I'm saying that Jesus was rich, that rich. When he was born, the May guy came with gold. How many rich men in Ghana have seen gold before? But for our sake, according to um the book of second corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 he became poor on calvary that we might be rich now so all these riches i spoke about has been transferred and handed over to us don't forget he said my father had many mountains don't forget he walked on the street of gold and this rich man who came to walk on the street of the earth said that now i deny myself of all these riches so that you can be rich brookman cannot be poor after today in the same way believing in this you can receive your prosperity on every side. The, the seventh exchange was that Christ suffered our shame that we might enjoy his glory. Do you know on Calvary he was naked? Uh, sometimes when they do the movies, they give him Pluto and those things. He was naked. His man, manhood was there. That's why the Bible says that the women stood afar. Because you couldn't watch his nakedness. It was only his mother who got close. He was naked shame so that you will not be shamed anymore so that you will not be put as put to shame anymore 
so that nobody will have any right to pull anything from any past of yours and any any records to come and scandalize and stigmatize you anymore and the last exchange was that christ was rejected by his father on the cross he shouted eli 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 lemas back to me my god my god why have you forsaken me it's believed theologically that he died prior to the normal time he was supposed to die because he suffered rejection to a point where rejection had to take him away before he in the the appropriate time suffered the rejection of his father the highest form of suffering in this life is rejection his father rejected him so that we could be accepted in the beloved and so you are accepted never let anybody tell you you ain't accepted never let anybody tell you your past mistakes something you said something you thought about something you did a place you slept has made you unaccepted the devil is a liar christ was rejected so that you can be accepted and that's the exchange that went on so if you ask me um something about the exchange that is the little i can share with the viewers about the exchange that really transpired and my joy is that all this was done for you and i just for us mm. wow and so if you believe in jesus you should know that all these privileges belong to you it is wonderful it's a wonderful experience to be a born again christian serving the lord but unfortunately if you are not born again it means that all these privileges you cannot enjoy that's right and so once our bishop is in the studios with us i want you to have the opportunity to have jesus as your lord and personal savior mm. and so daddy will lead those who are not born again to christ this song is coming to my heart just for me just for me jesus came and died just for me just for me just for me jesus came and died just for me he came and did all this just for me and just for you I don't know who is listening to me who is not born again but these are some of the privileges accepting christ as your lord and savior will come into your life the bible says, with our heart we believe on righteous now believe as i'm sharing the word now you believe now your mouth must confess unto salvation jesus is lord he came to die for my sins and on the third day he resurrected from the grave you should forgive you of all your sins and i'm telling you he'll come into your life and change you so repeat this after me prayerfully say jesus i now believe that you are the son of the living god you came to die for my sons on the third day you resurrected from the grave you are alive forever come into my heart change me and i will serve you the rest of my days amen glory to god if you if you if you said that prayer with me i want to know you're born again your name is written in the Lamb's book of life should jesus appear today in his glory you're going to make it to heaven i'm excited i'm excited that you are now born again just whatsapp me with the numbers on the screen or facebook me with the message or youtube me the bishop i gave my life to jesus when you shared those fantastic messages on easter and i'm telling you i'll be glad to read it and then if we're supposed to send you some materials that can help you grow in the faith, we'll be glad to do that. Like Pastor Charles rightly said, send your messages, your WhatsApp messages, send your YouTube messages, send your Facebook messages. I'll be coming back to be reading them and they'll be having the phone in segment two where we'll be getting interactive. And then if you need to be prayed for as you call, I'll be glad to pray for you in this season of Easter. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so we'll take a very quick break. We'll come back and then the show continues. This is actually not just a show. It's a whole service on its own. And so I, f I feel the presence of God here in the studios. I know you're feeling blessed in your homes too. Stay tuned. Don't change the dial. We'll be right back after this break.
you welcome back i hope you've been blessed a couple of messages on facebook joshua via hey joshua how are you say god bless you papa god bless you my son oh offer odro says i'm always happy to hear you speak you speak the mind of god we give god the glory michael opoku says that the word of god is your spirit daddy god bless you god bless you mike and then emmanuel here for say love you papa pastor emmanuel and samuel mensa god bless you and then phoebe also says that daddy your daughter needs one prophetic word you are covered your dad is covered your mom is covered and no weapon against you shall prosper Ariza Hamas a powerful insert form of the word. God bless you. Powerful, powerful time with the Bishop Felix Tenge. Felix, God bless you. Ariza Hamon says that God bless you, Daddy. God bless you. Emmanuel Realm says more grace, Daddy. God bless you. Majorin says Amen. Major, how are you? God bless you. Femi Daniel Jones says the morning, sweetheart, Daddy. God bless you, Femi. And then Francis Ni Ankara says powerful Bishop. Francis, God bless you. Long time to see you. And then Otin says powerful one prophet god bless you amelia and then ariza hamon says that hi daddy god bless you i think now he might can be says yes daddy and then francis niangela says we share and invite people certainly make sure you share and invite people to them also get connected francis niangela says amen lydia says the blood that's true and lydia says he's a great and deeper insight from our papa Keep sending your messages now. I'll be glad to be reading them. And then on YouTube, I think we have some messages. Um, Hubert Amwaku says, Hello, Bishop. I'm Kay from Spain watching you live. Shalom. Kay, you are covered and nothing will happen to you, okay? And then um, God's Way says, that, Good morning, Bishop. God bless you. God bless you too. Set Milk says, that God bless you, man of God. God bless you, Set. Set says that he's too much. Amen. My God, the exousia. We give God the praise. Dana Cole says that an amazing experience on the redemption hour. God bless you, Daddy. God bless you so much. Egmont Holali says that good morning, Daddy. God bless you, Bishop. I receive it. And God bless you too. And um I can see um um said Cocraft says powerful word. I'm really blessed. Said God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, and then Lydia said, "You say the blood, Lee. God bless you." And then we have messages on um, WhatsApp. WhatsApp messages on WhatsApp. Um, this one says that Pastor Charles and my Bishop, may God bless you too. Also for Godfrey Kumasi. My question is that after the resurrection of of Christ, I'm no I'm more under any family case again. So by the resurrection of Christ. Can any satanic scheme get me? No, it cannot get you again. You are risen together with Christ, seated together with him in high places, far above principalities and powers. So you are above witches, you are above demons. That was what I'll be talking about on Sunday. So the devil has no business accessing your dwelling anymore. And this one says, a blessed morning, Bishop. God richly bless you, Daddy, for the enlightenment. I'm so blessed this morning by the revelation that has transformed me, Michael Abayate from Ajay Kojo. God bless you, uh, Michael. And then this one says that, Daddy, God richly bless you. I'm going to devote my life to Jesus, and I'm born again now. Wow, wow. Somebody has given um, his, his or her life to God. He says, I'm Roderick from Half a Snee. And I wish to worship with you. We have a church in half a sneeze, so we'll get back to you. Then we'll give you um, the number of our pastor there so that you can be connected with him. But I bless your life in Jesus' name. And Roderick, we'll be glad to talk to you after the show. Okay, so we'll be calling you, and the staff will do everything possible to get connected with you so we can help you with some materials. Daddy, God bless you for um, decoding into my spirit. Please, I need one prophetic word. I lose grace on you and declare that the anointing will break every yoke and God will lift you up from the miry clay and establish your feet on the rock to stay. This one says that I'm watching it live. Pa, please, please, Daddy. I saw a horn filled with oil and was dropping on on me. Pa, please, what does it mean, George? I don't cry. So it means that the anointing of God has come upon you. We seal it and declare that the unction on you will never be taken out by the enemy we are in need of some of the aid please oh okay this is talking about the rima aid um, assistance okay so the team will be getting um, back to you and then 
and they will be coming to your place okay yeah um you know we have come out with um, something we call the rima aid and uh, we are distributing some um, food staffs to people in this very moment of this pandemic and so it's been amazing it's been amazing and i'll be talking briefly uh, about it with uh, pastor charles and pastor diana and the team who are really in charge of that and um, if god touches your heart also to assist you can also call the helplines and then we'll be glad to come to your house and come and take all the deliveries so that we can put them together with all things we're trusting god to um donate food okay um, rice bags of rice um, oil um, sardines sanitizers and all those things well, our target is a thousand people and they're so far so good people have really um, really called and we are going to just after the program the bus will be moving and so uh, that is what we are doing i mean to help the the, the, the system eugene prince odoy um, he says that gracious morning daddy the dynamic prophet of our time god bless you bishop i humbly tap into this oil in jesus name a prayer for the family god bless you i release grace upon you and pray that your family is secure preserved and protected i come against every attack of the enemy against your family and your life in jesus mighty name and then this one says that um good morning daddy i'm reverend kodio king i die reverend kodio how are you we are so blessed for the inside this morning god bless you too in jesus name and then this one says that daddy good morning i'm really enjoying your posture uh, you really know the bible please pray for me god bless you sister bridget sister bridget more grace on you in the gambia and i bless all my daughters and sons there and then this one says that um very powerful inside daddy please i need impartation from you i'm sammy sammy i release grace upon you too in jesus name and this one says, please how do i get a copy of the book on the prophetic all right my secretary will connect with you and then uh, if you are within accra the delivery team will just let you have it as they let you send your money if you're outside accra too then we'll see what we can do to let you have it so that we call it you and then this one says okay daddy you're wonderful and then this one says that um, god bless you daddy for the word you always bring to us i admonish all of us to always call um to others to join on rima tv let's also to support this ministry it's indeed from god we give god the glory for his goodness this one says hi daddy god bless you for the blessing my soul the word was deep god bless you god bless you and then this one says that good morning bishop can we pray a blessing of health and married manifestation for me thank jenny jenny how are you i hope you are feeling okay now let the hand of god come upon you i come against every attack of the devil on your life and i prophesy marital breakthroughs even to superabound on you that by the end of this year god will meet you at the point of your need thank you bishop for explaining to us what our lord jesus christ did on the cross for us no now i know maxwell from kaswa max god bless you in jesus name and this one sent me a voice message i can't listen to it now later on i'll listen i'll get back to you you are teaching that they will give god the glory in jesus name for the grace and the anointing to teach the word and then this one see the bishop um god bless you um, for this message it is deep we we'll give god praise and then this one says that oh okay uh, what i don't know what you are okay about but i could suggest is the word this one says thanks you are welcome and then this one is the bishop i am k and martha from spain i have been blessed by your ministry i'm glad seeing you again k and martha how are you long time long time long time we'll be chatting okay send me your uh, your picture and that of martha so i can really recollect because the name sound familiar it's been a long time you know since i left spain i think 15 17 years ago or so so please let me get the pictures then we'll connect god bless you and then this one says the good morning papa thanks for the word this morning papa i need one word from you this morning your son reverend sam takradi rcc reverend sam you are blessed you are covered and the whole takradi rcc is covered as well in jesus wonderful name i pray this one says that um let me see let me see good morning daddy i'm blessed daddy pray i want a good husband i'm benedicta benedicta i prophesy that you will be connected to your own husband who will take care of you and honor you in jesus louisa obwasi 
that is one word for me and my family. We need divine protection and elevation like never before. Lo, you are covered and protected and no weapon against you and the kids shall ever prosper. May God bless you in Jesus' name. This one is a good morning, Daddy. I'm Pastor William Chano from Ku. I have really enjoyed your teaching of his blood and the exchange. It has been a tremendous revelation. Thank you. And God bless you. Would we'll like to link up, Reverend. God bless you, man of God. You are always welcome after the lockdown. Try come to Accra and let's get connected. Good morning, Daddy. God bless you for the word. I'm blessed. I'm Pastor Eric watching from Kumasi. I love your ministry, Pastor Eric. I also love you and God bless you more in Jesus' name to the max. And then, yeah, that is the picture. Uh, oh, 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 okay, okay, now I know. Now I know the face. Yeah, okay. God bless you. And that's your wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know the face. So we'll be chatting from there, okay? God bless you. And then this one says that, uh, Papa, tomorrow, are you going to bless oil for us so that I may buy one or so for girlfriend? Yeah, definitely. We'll be having the um, Zoom. When we finish with all the program preaching and then the communion and everything, I will let all of you come on the Zoom platform, okay? And then on Zoom, I will see your faces. So I'll be laying my hands on your forehead on the on the on the screen. And then after that I'll bless oil and I will command you under the anointing to apply the oil on your children, everybody connected to you. So um, get the oil. Very, very imperative. And then this one says that God bless you, Daddy, for teaching us the word. You are my number one teacher in the ministry. I give God the praise and the glory. And then this one says that please sir, will sir, when will you chat with my sister? um your sister ah okay 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 it's after the program and then the team will call um, um all the people we are rapidly going to respond to and then we'll be coming to them okay and then this one say thank you so much holali holali god bless you my regards to everybody and your mom daddy a word from you for divine speed uh, i lose it on you and declare that oil for divine speed will come upon you Bishop, please, we need a branch. RCC at Kaswa here. Pa, 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 pa. Thanks for the good work, George. I don't cringe. So, George, I think um, after the lockdown, you have to come to Accra. Come see us. Let's arrange and then send the pastor there. And we can start something together. Okay, I'll be glad to see branches everywhere. Now, if you are watching me and God lays on your heart to even start a branch for us, send me a message. We'll talk to you. If you are into ministry will come and train you hands on the job and then we'll start something with you if you are not a pastor you can gather some people we'll send pastors there and then we can start something rcc must expand and the world must hear such messages all right god bless you good morning daddy god bless you so much for the word i love you so much i'm waiting patiently for the time to talk with you daddy your daughter claudia claudia how are you yeah so i'll be waiting for your call and then this one i'm seeing your face and her face good morning daddy daddy please kindly confirm it for me um friend it's for my friend if they are meant to be together husband and wife okay i'll be praying about it and then i'll get back to you and then this one said daddy if you don't have all over white clothes tomorrow can you put on black skirt and white blouse or shirt oh that's fine so long as you have some white in it that's okay that's okay I don't want anybody, anybody to be under any duress. We just want to have the psychological um, um, a mindset that victory has come. Christ is risen. So that's okay. And so tomorrow, all of us are going to connect on Rima TV and then on all my social media platforms, YouTube, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, and then on Zoom. All of us, all right? And then you are going to put on white. Everybody, you're going to put on white. If it's not even white, Toto, white in Toto, you could have something white in it. Okay, we're saying we appreciate God for sending Jesus to come die for us and resurrect on the third day, okay, for all our sins are forgiven. We are now the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The meeting is going to start at 9 to 12. We'll be having communion. So get some wine, of course, non-alcoholic or any juice or whatever. And then because of the lockdown, if you don't have wine, it's okay to have squash, whatever. Have whatever that you can call juice cake coca-cola whatever uh -huh. and god will understand because you can't step out and go look for um, anything to buy so god will understand with your bread if you don't have bread some cake or some biscuits you're just going to pray on them 
we have communion together. I'm telling you, we want to secure the boundaries of our habitation by the efficacy of the blood of the eternal covenant. I think we have a couple of calls. And so activate the phone lines, put the telephone number there. And anybody who wants to call, I'm going to receive calls. The first 20 people, I'll be praying for them. And then we can end the show so that the rapid response team, the RIMA 8 team, can set off and go and take care of our wonderful uh, brothers and sisters who have called us and have sent us their SMSs that they really want us to come. We'll be going to their homes. And please, if they call, if you call and they call, if they send a message, if you send a message, they call you, give them vivid direction to your house so that they don't waste the petrol, okay? So they'll come straight to your house and deliver the package and then they can move on to the other place. Hello? Are you sure um, yesterday's problem has not sufficed? Because by now, there should be calls. So let me read some few messages. You have a call? Hello? Off your telephone, uh, off your uh, TV so you can hear me on your telephone. Good morning, how are you? Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Your name, please, and where are you calling from? Good morning. We missed him. So, unfortunately, you call off your team. Hello. Hello, good evening. Hello. Hello, good morning. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Your name, please, and where are you calling from? That, that, uh, please, uh, I'm calling from Takwa. This is your son, uh, Prophet Jacob from Takwa. Oh, Prophet Jacob, how are you? By the grace of God, that you need one word. Your son needs one word. I miss you so much. My regards to all the church members there. As Christ was buried, I declare that poverty is buried out of your life, sicknesses and sorrow and shame is buried. And as he's resurrected, you are rising from obscurity to prominence. You are being the head and not the tail. God bless you. Amen. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, please, and where are you calling from? My name is Alan Charles. I'm calling from a friend. Okay, talk to me, please. Hello, you are on air. Please talk to me. Hello. Hello, talk to me. Uh, Bishop, uh, I'm Charles Alvinson. Okay. I'm one of your uh, shepherds that you raised in your whole time at Tampa. Wow. By the grace of God, we are still in the ministry. I decided to call and bless you for how far you are going through and the grace upon your life. Wow. Wow. wow god bless you charles after the lockdown try and come and see me yeah, i remember some 20 something years ago i trained some people in abakrampa i just came and then had some teaching service and trained some people and my he's still in the ministry i give god the glory god bless you Charles darlington hello <laughs> it's amazing to see your people hello. loving you hello 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 good morning, uh, good morning your name please and where are you calling from Okay, Francis, let's hear you, please. Oh, I love your, I love what you do. God bless you. I want you to do it for me and my family. Amen. Father, I pray for your blessings on your son and the entire family in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you, sir. Hello? Hello. Hello, good morning. Yes, sir. Your name, please, and where are you calling from? My name is um, Shafo. I'm calling from Brekum. Brekum. Okay, let's hear you, please. Okay, that's the place I'm from. Uh, you want us to pray for you? Father, I'm asking for blessings on Samuel, declaring that every desire of his heart shall be met according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. 
God bless you. Yeah. So, hello. <clears throat> Hello, Daddy. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, please. Where are you calling from? I'm Louisa from Obasanjo. Ah, Lou, how are you? I'm thank you, Daddy. Yourself? Very well. Talk to me. Oh, I miss you. <laughs> you know, I'm not seeing you, but I want to embrace the man. You're not seeing me. I know. I know. But after <laughs> after next lockdown, try and come to Accra because we certainly have yeah, to meet. Yeah, after this lockdown, dear, yes, I have to make it a point to come to Accra and see. That's right. That's right. That's that right. that went for myself, my parents, my friends. I want to marry God in the next year. That is the realm of God. And I want to move into that wrong way. Amen. Father, John John with my daughter, I release the grace of God upon her and demand that every expectation of her heart shall be fulfilled. Marital breakthrough and promotion at work. I rebuke Satan to stay out of her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Lou. Hello. 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 Good morning. I'm Bridget. Okay. I'm Bridget, talk to me. I I like your message, but I always have to remember your message. Please, I want you to pray for me so that I'm obedient to God and also. Do what God wants you to do, and the will of God is done in your life. Wow, Bridget, God bless you. That is an amazing topic. I join faith with you, and I pray that God will help you to serve Him better than before, and God will use you for His glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. 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 Good, mo good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, can you reduce the volume of your television? Yes, your name and where you calling from? My name is Divine. I'm calling from the Gambon. Okay, Divine, let's hear you, please. Uh, one of us is following your program from television. And um, I pray just that I should call you and ask for you to pray for me. I'm a business person. I'm a teacher part. Everything will be fine. Let's join faith. Father, I pray to agree with my brother and I rebuke any devil against his businesses and demand that blessings of God will overtake him in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello. Hello, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Your name, please. Um, Pastor Yamisha of uh, Amen. You're from saying, now for free. But, uh, oh, I'm not Oh, I'm saying. I'm not saying. I'm Many, 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 many happy returns. Mm. 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 Nina, fe, 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 fe. Okay, and you may be before a problem. That is the revelation. Yami Shrao. Hello. We missed that one. Otono Buasio. Oh, yeah, fe, fe, fe. All right, I think um, I'll take my last two calls. Hello. Hello. Hello, good morning. Hello, Bishop. Hello, good morning. Hey, Osovo, how are you? I'm doing very Talk to me. God bless you this day. Amen. Every time I see you on air, I feel like so and better on shape. And we are really like the PK. I like the BBC. I like an American. And I'm a minister. I would like you to pray for me. For the day of my heart to become to the better. Amen. Father, I join faith with your servant. And I ask for the blessings of God to come upon him. Use him for your glory in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. God bless you. Well, all too soon our time is up. We'll be going for a short breather. And when I come back, I'll be interviewing the Rima 8 team. Because the bus is ready, the food, everything is set. 
they are going to move and so i just want us to discuss a couple of things with them and then after that we'll set off god bless you a short breather
Well, you welcome back again, and we are about to end this wonderful episode on um, uh, the redemption now, you know, but, you know, as we are in this trying moments um, of this pandemic, COVID-19, um, when the president um, extended the days of the lockdown in my office, I said to my team, that, look, it's not enough to be preaching the words of the people. I think it's high time we have to think about the community and then see what we can do. So we called some of our elders and all the team and the church and decided to do something, you know. So uh, we quickly created a, a team, you know, and by the grace of God, we have really put a lot of resources together. Our target is to feed a thousand people. Uh, we're getting them rice, we're getting them oil, we're getting them. The team we mentioned is all the things the sardine, gloves, and the sanitizers, and all those things. And the team is here. And uh, I would like them to introduce themselves from my right hand. And so, uh, gentlemen and, 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 and ladies, you welcome to my show. I would like you to introduce yourselves. Thank you, Daddy, and good morning to you, Daddy. God bless you for having us. My name is Pastor Diana. My, my name is Pastor Charles. My name is Minister Cassandra. My name is Pastor Felix. Amazing and, and, and wonderful um, and women and men of God. I repeat it in trustworthy and noble people. And uh, it's going to be wonderful. Um, uh, Reverend Dina, you and the team, I would like all of you, one after the other, to tell the public what this whole Rima Aid is about and uh, what they should expect. Okay, so from you. Thank you, Daddy, once again. Um, a very good morning to viewers on Rima TV and uh, in particular uh, the Redemption Hour. Like Daddy said, uh, it is an opportunity to give back to the society. And so we're just sharing in the vision of our father, the church, and the Wissi Brookman Ministries. And so when this pandemic came in, we decided that uh, we we're going to you know, share to the society um, what the church stands for. And then over the week and over the weeks, the past weeks, you've been very, very blessed to us by sharing with us the faith and the hope that we have to have in order to you know stand in the gap and we feel that this is the time that people really need us this is the time that the church has to give back to society and so yes we are coming out there to feed um, the hungry and help those who are in trouble so that our lights will so shine you know in the darkness and the darkness around us will also bring forth the light that is out there and so if you see us coming to your homes it is the rima aid coming to share with you um the donation of um, in food in the lives of rice oil and um, sardines spaghetti and all of that just to make sure that uh, we feed as many people as possible and then to add to that um we're not just looking at everybody uh, there are some specific people that we are looking at. We are looking at the widow and the aged, um, single mothers, less privileged, and of course, uh, we are also not looking at the church. We are also looking at everybody around the community of that the church. That's what I to talk about. Yeah. Um, Pastor Dana just spoke about the fact that it's not only you know, about the church. Yes, it's the community. What do you have to say about that? Yes, thank you very much, Daddy. Um, I believe that this season of Easter is a season of love and by your inspiration we are sharing this love to everybody in the community. Once you are in need, I believe that the love of God, this, this material time is a time where we show the love of God to everybody and so wherever you are, this is an extension of the love of God to all of us. So it's just to tell us that as a church, we appreciate you. No matter what you're going through, this is a time to receive the love of God. And the little we can also do 
is to extend this hand to you and so um, don't feel shy don't feel intimidated don't feel downtrodden because you are receiving help embrace it like you would the love of god because it's just an extension of the love of god amen mr cassandra uh, what should people expect i am aware you are part of the team and uh, you'll be going with the rima cameras and uh, you'll be interviewing people as you are sharing the love of god with them what should people expect and uh, when they see you what should be the expectations? Um, okay, um, I think our viewers and the people should expect um, us sharing our love to, to the community, sharing this food to the community. Um, we, 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 we would like people to open up to us when we come, people to open um, their doors to us so that we can share our love. This is a social responsibility as a church. And this is what the Bible, or this is some of the things that Jesus did when he came here on earth to extend love to other people. And that is what we are going out there to do. So we expect that people would open um, their doors to us so that we can come and share this love that we have for them. So true. Um, when you were talking, something came to mind. Um, and the main reason why people are afraid of cameras, they will think that, hey, they're going to be doing no, no. You know, number one, we, we should be able to be accountable, you know, to all the people who are supported. So they have to see us moving the bus, and they have to see people um, having their deliveries. So when they see you with your cameras, and then you're asking them how they feel, and the atmosphere in their homes after they've seen um, the team come, they should not be scared and worried, you know. So, so that's why we we'll want to do some documentary to also encourage other people who really want to also sow in to support so we can, you know, feed as many people as um, we can. Because we don't know when this um, lockdown um, um, will, be, will be ending, okay. So, uh, Pastor Felix, uh, the main man, would you, would you share with, 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 with our viewers, number one, um, the things that um, you're going out there with, and what they should expect and um, the kind of um, items you have and all those things and then if somebody also in his or her heart um, would also want to uh, be, be, even before that you talk about the items and then i've seen some problems people are having um, some people feel intimidated and they feel like what would they think about me am i less privileged oh, no you know people because works are locked down and all those things their companies they may certainly and some people cannot even go out of their home so that's why we think don't feel ashamed to even send your whatsapp um on on the platforms okay so that we can easily come and help so i don't know if you can talk on on on, on those points okay um thank you very much daddy um god bless you for this vision um actually we are coming your way to help and support and also assist um, i realize that because some of us are not in people who were exempted um, to go out not to go out and they find it very difficult to go out and then to get some food items and those things you know actually sometimes when we are even in our private cars moving without being the rima tv bus sometimes the police people harass us a bit before they will allow us to move and other things you know so we are reaching to you not to intimidate you to let you feel that um, um you, we see you to be um, somebody who needs help or something no but we are reaching out to you to let you know that we love you and god also love you because we are not doing this out of our own will but by the instructions of god as our father has already emphasize on that and then we are coming your way with a bag of rice um, um, a sachet of um, um, spaghetti a tin tomato an oil a hand sanitizer and um, we have sardines and then we have macros in addition as well at least it can cater for you this few um, week that the president has announced that the shutdown should continue on 
at least by the time the shutdown will be calling off, you'll be able to at least um, feed yourself with this and then to also move on. So please, you just have to open up your heart. Don't feel shy. Don't feel that, oh, why are people coming to help me? Am I in need? And it's not of that purpose. But as you are a single mother, as you are a widow, as you are aged, and you feel that uh, we have to come to you, please open up your doors to us. Let's come and give you the maximum support that God has instructed yeah. that we give to you. All right. We well, bless the Lord. Yesterday night, Pastor Dan, I saw some people calling, and uh, I saw the help team saying that they don't call WhatsApp or SMS. I want you to really talk about that. And after that, if there are other people too who also want to support, okay, in cash or in kind, um, they can also go ahead and do that. And then encourage the MC also to put the numbers on the screen. And so that just in case somebody wants to SMS for any help or any assistance, the person can do that. Okay, thank you very much, Daddy. Yes, so um, we, in order to be able to serve as many people as we can, we came up with the... Uh, two numbers that you can send either WhatsApp or text messages to. Uh, we are not taking calls because we want to be able to track it if efficiently and be able to reach out to as many people as possible. And so there will be a number on your screen and one to send directly a WhatsApp message indicating clearly your name and then if possible you can send us your location via WhatsApp and then a, via text message as well and then we'll get back to you either via text message or via call to identify clearly where you are and then we can reach out to you um, already we're getting a lot of support daddy um, you started with this with us with a seed and then of course the leadership of the church also came together to do something and between um, last Monday and yesterday uh, we had other you know partners of ebm also coming in to support one way or the other just to make sure that uh, this vision is carried out effectively and so we are again reaching out to anybody watching us today and you think that uh, you really want to share in this vision and you really want to support in this you can send as well your donation either in cash or it could be an item and the item should be non-perishable by date so that at least uh, we don't have the items perishing. And so you can call the helpline and then we can get back to you wherever you are. Or you can send us mobile money, our regular mobile money number that is normally scrolling on the screen. And then you can send us your cash donation. Please, when you are sending your mobile money, kindly reference it COVID-19 because um, that is the main mobile money that we use for our offerings. And so for us to be able to track clearly what you know, seeds are coming into this particular course, we want you to reference it COVID-19. In case you have any difficulty in doing so, you can call the helpline and the helpline will assist you on how to do it. And again, if you have an item wherever you are, because of social distancing, we don't want you to come to us. We'll come to you right at your doorstep with the bus to carry every or any other perishable item you have as a donation to the Rima Aid. We thank God. And it's amazing. Time is fast spent. You have to move. People are hungry and they have to eat. Yeah. And so, Father, we bless all our viewers. We thank you for great time we've had. It's a humble prayer that you continue to bless our uh, viewers and protect them in this season that nothing evil befalls them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen and ladies, God richly bless you. And God bless you. Keep watching Rima TV. It's been your friend, your brother, and your pastor on your love and cherished program, Redemption Now. Bishop Edwin Mr. Pukuma. Love you.